Well, it's a while ago, I suppose I should just say, that um, I opened a, a crowdfund for uh, legal expenses, and I received quite a bit of money, probably a bit more than what I was asking for, uh, which opens up some interesting avenues for me to pursue justice, as it were. Uh, one of the things that has really pissed me off recently is that uh, Russell Greer received pro bono representation and received an absolutely disastrous 10th Circuit uh, federal court uh, ruling in his favor uh, with pro bono representation from a digital rights scalper group called the Digital Justice Foundation. And uh, their application of law was both erroneous in terms of copyright and also its own procedural standards. Uh, it contradicted the Supreme Court, and it basically made posting a DMCA takedown notice a uh, legal liability, which has a chilling effect on freedom of speech. Uh, copyright is already a chilling effect on freedom of speech, um, but the implications that contributory copyright infringement can be established with merely a republication of a DMCA that you don't intend to oblige for whatever reason uh, is dangerous. It's actually really, really bad. Um so when we applied for en banc, they actually asked for a reply. And this is very unusual. Usually when they ask for an, uh, a reply, that means that they're going to grant an en banc review. And they chose not to, which basically means that the Digital Justice Foundation's reply uh, became the case law for this. Because you can look at their arguments and then you can say, well, I guess they were right because the court found that um, there was no need for an en banc review. And when that happens, there is only one possible avenue one desperate maneuver that you can make uh, literally to what is called the court of last resort, the United States Supreme Court. Um, so since I have the money and it's earmarked for legal expenses anyways, I figure why not file with the Supreme Court of the United States of America? And so we've done so. So now Joshua Moon and Kiwi Farms, a website, whatever the fuck that means, is the petitioner in the Supreme Court of the United States. Uh, and yes, this is live. Uh, and we outlined three questions. I'll simply read this because it can be understood in language a child uh, can understand. Uh, questions presented. One, whether the receipt of a takedown notice alone is sufficient to impute actual knowledge of copyright infringement to its recipient under the contributory infringement framework. Uh, basically, does posting a DMCA mean uh, automatically mean that you recognize that there's copyright infringement? Or can you post the DMCA for other reasons? The answer is obvious, which is what we're hoping that the Supreme Court will see. Uh, number two, whether a recipient of a takedown notice who publishes the notice with limited editorial comment thereon materially contributes to any prior ongoing direct copyright infringement, i.e. if I say, no, this is obviously fair use, you fucking retard, uh, does that mean that I am doing something bad? By saying, this is fair use, you fucking retard, does that mean that I acknowledge that that is not fair use and therefore i am contributing to that probably not but the 10th appellate court seems to think so and the number three now whether posting a link to con uh, copyrighted material saved at a third-party storage provider is the same as posting the infringing material itself um this is actually settled case law because um the supreme court has ruled like 15 years ago that this is untrue but yet the 10th court said that it is true, <laughs> that if you have a website that links to a Google uh, server and that server has content that may infringe on copyright, um, then it's Google's responsibility to remove it. It's not my responsibility to remove it because I can't. The, that was found probably in the 2000s, I think, and yet it's still not resolved case law because the 10th court fucked up. And you would hope that the 10th court would recognize when these exact same things were told to them months ago, uh, they had fucked up, that they would say, oh yeah, we did fuck up. And they kind of did, but then said, actually, we don't feel like we're doing it anymore. Um, so uh, now we have to ask the Supreme Court to fix what the 10th Court has fucked up. Because until they do, um, there is now contributory copyright infringement liability for every link ever posted on any website, even websites that don't have images. Like you think, oh, my website, my BBS forum, is only um, tax. Well, too bad. Well, you got you got links. If you can post tax, you can post a link. You can post a link to a movie on a Google Drive, and guess what? Um, that is apparently contributory copyright infringement. Um, 
in the 10th court, in, uh, which applies to uh, federally because it's a federal court. Um, so th there is speculation because to be clear, the Supreme Court sees about 80 cases a year. 8,000 are submitted, which means if you do the math, if you do a little gamba sesh in your head, um, the odds of you uh, getting in, getting what's called writ, um, actually, I can't pronounce the other word. It's, it's like certiorari or something. Uh, the chances of getting writ are 1%. <laughs> so if you uh, get, <laughs> say the writ's name, we can't do it. So if you get writ, uh, you've had a epic gamba sesh. Uh, it's a one in a hundred odds. Um, however, there is, I mean, the number one, it's copyright law. And the the number of copyright cases that get appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court are very limited. And number two, it's copyright law that directly contradicts existing established Supreme Court precedent. So there is a chance that some guy who really cares about copyright law is going to see this and think, hmm, this is a bit fucked up. Maybe we should review this. But there is the, the, uh, the opposing thought that they're going to see this and say, oh, Kiwi Farms, mm, I don't want to deal with Kiwi Farms and a pro se litigant. Maybe we'll just wait for somebody else's life to get completely fucked up because of some frivolous bullshit copyright lawsuit. And then with a different set of facts, we'll settle, settle the issue for everybody. Um, which apparently they can do. They're not supposed to, but there's nothing stopping them because you can't force the Supreme Court to do anything it doesn't want to do. Um, so that's that's the fear. It's not that I, it's not that it's a bad argument. It's a very good argument. Um, the The problem is is that I am me, and the rules of the universe do not necessarily apply to me in the way that you would expect them to, um, in regards to anybody else. So. You don't think that they've heard of the Kiwi Farms. When you submit this, I'm not handing it to Clarence Thomas or Clarice Thomas, if you prefer. I am handing it to um, a bunch of uh, clerks. These clerks are, are lawyers that work for the Supreme Court. Each of the justices have their own team of clerks. The clerks will each read this for them and then write a brief that explains, number one, what the, the facts of the case are. And number two, what the clerk suggests. So each of each of them are going to receive a brief from their much younger lawyers that, that work for them. And many of them might have heard of the Kiwi Farms. They might be online. They might be familiar with XYZ. They may have prejudices against the site for whatever reason. Um, it's definitely not in, uh, out, of, out of the question that there may be people listen, uh, reading these reading this who instantly recognize what Kiwi Farms a website is and think, oh, those are bad people. You don't want to you don't want to take a case in their favor. Just let these guys dangle and then deal with this later with with a better case. Uh which which would suck. Um now the there's two possible outcomes. There's one I don't understand too well. Um there's that the Supreme Court can look at this and without hearing oral arguments can decide to remand. They can say the 10th um court definitely fucked up. We don't need to hear oral arguments from the parties. Um, so we're going to send it back and we're going to say, fix this immediately. And we're not going to do anything about it. The second funnier option is the one that everyone's familiar with where they say, okay, we're going to have this argued. So come to the Supreme court. Now I want to rule out something that anyone, um, many people have brought up and is just not going to happen. So don't even get your hopes up. There will never be a, in the infinite world of all timelines in existence. There is no timeline where Russell Greer shows up to the Supreme Court of the United States and makes oral arguments. That is not going to happen. The only people um, kind of unique in the world or in the, the, the U.S. litigation system, the only people who can do oral arguments in the Supreme Court are people registered specifically to the Supreme Court's bar. Hardin is registered to the Supreme Court bar. Uh, Russell Greer is not. So if something were to happen, there, there's... There's a possibility it wouldn't happen, but if Russell Greer were to suddenly be the defendant or respondent in this petition and he doesn't have a lawyer, there would be a million attorneys that would raise their hand and say, I will rep like the entire U.S. Supreme Court bar would say, I will represent your case for free because going to the Supreme Court is the most masturbatory thing that is, uh, an attorney in this, this country can accomplish. So he will have no issues getting representation. 
if something were to happen and no, like people say, it your face, <laughs> you know, uh, which is not going to happen, obviously. But if that were to happen, this is a joke. Um, the chief justice would assign him an attorney from the bar, you know, so uh, he will get represented. There will never be a case where, where Russell Greer does delivers oral arguments to the Supreme Court of the United States. Um, so that's what that's what the what's happening with that. Uh, now, the issue is looking statistically speaking, it's about a two two to three odds that the case is actually delivered in our favor. So not only is it a one percent chance that we're hurt at all, um, it is a or maybe a two percent chance if you include when they just uh, respond automatically. But then there's also a chance that it doesn't go in our favor. Now. Uh, I've made the decision, and I've I've had time to think about this. I mentioned that Russell Greer might get, or would get, inevitably, no matter what, would get free representation from a very serious law firm uh, licensed to the Supreme Court of the United States' bar that would represent him free of charge just for the honor of being in the Supreme Court. I would also have that privilege because I am the plaintiff, and there's lots of Supreme Court bar attorneys uh, who would love to represent a Supreme Court copyright case. Many of them extremely, extremely good at copyright law uh, that I would have my my pick of the litter in regards to who I want to represent me, and I would have that pick for free. I have decided um, against the uh, advice of my attorney that if we were to go to oral arguments, I would force Hardin to continue and actually do the oral arguments himself because... As far as I'm concerned, the ACLU, FIRE, and EFF have had the opportunity to intervene and represent me at any point in time in the last four years. They have chosen every step of the way, and I've reached out to them multiple times, uh, to ignore me or to simply say thank you for bringing this matter to our attention and not actually do anything. So now, why would I, having reached the Supreme Court, in the 1% chance that actually happens, Why would I then say, okay, now that we've made it and I've spent money out of pocket to reach this point, and I'm only reaching this point because my district-level attorney did not do a good job representing arguments in the appellate court to begin with, um, why would I now give you the privilege of appearing in the Supreme Court to make my defense? I'm not going to. Now, there is a chance that's a bad idea because Hardin might not do as great a job as possible. Um, But if he completely fucks it up and the Supreme Court rules that any use of copyrighted work is a death penalty, um, I don't care. I am kind of would actually be very happy if things were so fucked up as a result of this that nobody could use anything in any context legally anymore uh, in regards to copyright. Because then maybe the ACLU fire in the EFF would give pause about if maybe they should start representing customers or not customers, but clients that are bad PR. Because right now, all these so-called charitable organizations that are supposed to stand up for civil liberties don't do it if they think that you're too toxic for them. Maybe if you take a hammer and break it down so that everyone suffers, they will sit back and think, hmm, that was a bad idea. Next time, we should represent them. Maybe it'll be a, a win for public policy chat. Um, so, yeah, fuck him. Um, Hardin represents me for almost nothing. Basically nothing. He charges me less than what he... If he has to, if he's busy and he, like, offloads me to other attorneys that want to help with First Amendment shit, then, uh, like, that costs more, usually, because he, he can't discount me for somebody else's work. But... Um, so I have to pay them at their regular rates, even though they work for very little themselves because they just want to be involved in fun, fun, quote unquote, fun legal work. Um, so why would I not permit him to move forward to the Supreme Court? Jenny logic. Yes. No, no. Suffer. Suffer America. Suffer United States of America. Suffer EFF. Suffer ACLU. Guess what? I'm a petitioner to the Supreme Court and my stupid website might go to the Supreme Court and we might fuck up copyright copyright law for everybody my my case might be cited in a million different cases moving forward to put people in jail for the most benign uses of anything ever guess what fuck you <laughs> i don't care <laughs> hate me i don't give a shit everyone else hates me already you already you already fucking hate me what are you gonna do you're gonna hate me more oh wow what a shame i would hate to be hated a little bit more by you retards all right Harden will be happy to hear that. I don't know if he will. That sounds like a lot of pressure. <laughs> I haven't even told him yet. Um, 
<laughs> Suffer Supreme Court. It's it's weird. PPP does like his own Suffer voice. I listened to I listened to an old clip of him making fun of Cog. I can't even. I didn't. I wanted to show this on stream until I realized that it was so old that it wasn't worth it. But they did like a Christmas video making fun of Cog. Um, and it was so funny that I was I was laughing out loud because Cog took calls um, in regards to his his girlfriend cheating on him, and it was just like the most retarded British should have ever heard. You miss you misses is getting fucked. You misses is getting fucked in every hole. <laughs> Nonsense. Suffer Cog. Um, what's the Supreme Court show? Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.